Third time is the charm, right? I first filmed this and didn't have my mic on, and then I filmed it without actually pressing record. So this time we are recording, you hear me, everything's good. I have a little unboxing in store for you today. I honestly hesitated whether I'd show my face and just do the unboxing. It's been a rough week. I've had a lot of flashbacks. Uh, it's my birthday. I mean, not today, but this week. And when you've had a lot of childhood trauma that, I, I mean, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but my symptoms get a little bit worse. But I am very excited about this package. I ordered it a couple weeks ago. And I really just want to dig in and show you some of these colors that I've gotten so that I'll give you a little bit of a clue about what it is that we have in here. Yeah, and I'd also like to invite you if you want to to pull out your own sketchbook as you listen, watch this unboxing. I, I don't know, I think that I'd love for my videos, whether, you know, it's YouTube or Patreon, to be this opportunity where you can connect with your creativity as well. So yeah, if you feel like taking that invitation, I'd love to hear how it goes in the comments. And no worries if you're just here to watch me unbox this lovely box. Let's get started. All right. Let's get into it. I'm struggling with this. I guess I'll just break this box. So now you get a little bit of a sense of what's coming next. so excited about this. So these are, maybe I'll start with these ones. These are acrylic wash paints that I've had in my basket for many months. And when I decided to actually get the other gouache set, as I had forgotten, I had completely forgotten that I had selected these colors and I was like, well, I really do love them, so why don't I get them? These are acrylic gouache. Uh, as you may know, I love acrylic gouache. I've also done a an unboxing of a Rebecca Holbein limited edition acrylic gouache palette, which I own and absolutely love. Um, and I just 
saw these colors and thought they were absolutely beautiful. We've got, oh, it's a little bright. I'm just gonna turn it down. There we go. So we have some pale lavender, some raw umber, ash green, and some lilac. Really beautiful colors. So these ones we'll try maybe first, since there's only four of them. And then we'll move on to this amazing, beautiful set that I'm very, very, very excited about. And actually, the I've already tried a few of these colors because a friend of mine, Stephanie at Demi Godet, on Instagram when I met up with her when I was in Montreal she brought these along and had me try them and I have not worked very frequently with regular gouache I've worked way more with acrylic gouache and they were just so luscious so here they are a beautiful range of winter dark colors and this really beautiful geisha blue which is actually one of the ones that I tried with Demi Godet. I didn't try all of them when we saw each other. I just picked a few that I thought were intriguing and didn't have a lot of time to try them all out. So today I'm really excited to do that. And yeah, in the future, I'm going to probably be doing some classes about regular gouache as well. That was kind of also my thinking is that I would like to familiarize myself with regular gouache a little bit more and then maybe, yeah, create a class about it um, and maybe how it can work alongside your acrylic gouache, that kind of thing. All right, let's get to it. So first we're gonna start out with these and I actually was, um, working on some sketchbook tours uh, yesterday and found this older sketchbook and I realized that there were some pages at the end that were not, oh, wait, no, it wasn't this one. Oh, it's a different one. There are some pages in this other sketchbook that I'm going to go get that were still empty. And so I thought, why not use that as the place to kind of swatch these colors? This one. Yes, 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 yes. This was the one. See so yeah, how there are a few pages left. These are um, pith sketchbooks. Um, obviously, for no I'm not sponsored for any of these things, uh, though I will leave links for you, and they might be... Well, for the Jacksons ones, there'll be affiliate links. Um, but no, I'm not sponsored for any of these products. I just really love them. And this sketchbook in particular, the Pith sketchbooks, which are made in the UK. I just really love them. I love how they lay flat. I love that the paper is thick enough for mixed media. And yeah, just really enjoy the paper and what it allows me to do with it. So why don't we do, I have some water here. I will get out my brush. And I'm not going to be too complicated about this. I'm going to really just, instead of using a palette, just go directly onto my sketchbook. And this color is even more beautiful than I hoped it would be. Wow, I really love that one. Um, another one of my favorites is Ash Rose, and so that's what made me also want to try this one, this Ash Green. <laughs> I don't know if it's because of my recent class about color palettes and gouache that uh, I'm making circles for my <laughs> swatches, but yeah, circles are always fun. Except that since the camera angle is a bit different than what I'm used to, I'm kind of struggling with getting this 
nice and round. Beautiful color, very moody. I'd love to hear if you have any favorite um, acrylic gouache colors. I do not own all of the acrylic gouache uh, tubes that exist. Um, and yeah, if there's a particular color that you think is really nice, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Time to move on to the pale lavender. And you can tell obviously that I'm very excited by these purples because I got two different purples. Um, oops. I really like this one. Obviously it is a purple, but it has a little bit of that blue quality to it, especially right next to this green. And I'm going to be honest, I put too much water on my brush here, so I'm not going to get the level of opaqueness of the other one. Who knows, maybe I will. Beautiful color. I don't know, on the video, maybe it even looks blue. I mean, it definitely looks quite bluish. Like, it's really in between blue and purple. And that's what was intriguing me about this one. It's one of the reasons I wanted it, because I love my blue violets. And, of course, the... Why don't we go for the raw umber first? Oh, interesting. So I actually thought that this one would be slightly darker than it seems to be. A very nice chocolatey, like a mocha brown kind of. I have another brown that I really love that's uh, much darker. Maybe that's why I thought this one would be darker. I don't know. I think it's the sepia, if I'm not mistaken. Very lovely. And finally, and you can of course see the way the color shifts slightly as it dries. You know, the green, the blue is going to be next. So it's kind of a very, like, muted, almost vintage -y color palette, I'm realizing, which is quite in line with what I've been uh, doing and teaching recently. I, I don't know, I've been really obsessed with retro kind of vintage colors. Ooh, this is definitely very, very purple. Um, really lovely. And honestly, a color that I used to hate, but that I now am pretty obsessed with. And you can tell that I still have a little bit of that brown in my brush, so there's a little bit of that in there, but hopefully I can hide it. And there we go. Those are those four lovely colors. And of course, like all whole buying products, which I love, <laughs> I wish I were sponsored. <laughs> that would be awesome. Um, Cause I, yeah, they, I just love their products. I think they, they have a really wonderful eye for color and pigmentation, and they just move really nicely. If you've never tried them, then, I mean, they're for sure expensive, like they're more on the pricier side, but they are very beautiful. So just get one, maybe, uh, one color that you love, and that can be always really fun. 
and shall we do these ones on the same page? up a lot of space with those. Um, yeah, maybe I could do it here. Why not, right? So if you don't know the difference between gouache and acrylic gouache, acrylic gouache, once it dries, if I added water or paint on top of this, it wouldn't matter. This would stay absolutely solid. Regular gouache does re-wet. So even after it's dry, if I added some water or some paint, it would start to dilute again and maybe bleed into the water um, or the paint. So that's one of the major differences uh, between the two. But I've also heard, and I could be mistaken, I'd actually, I want to look this up, but I have heard though that um, because gouache so acrylic gouache has some sort of component that brings it closer to acrylic, which is why it solidifies um, once it's dry. Regular gouache doesn't have that. And so what I've heard is that I think the gouache colors are maybe more pigmented, like not pigmented, brighter than acrylic gouache. But I could be completely wrong about that. So please don't take my word for it. And obviously there are differences between different types of gouache where some like low quality gouache will have um, whiteners or chalk fillers, which will dull the colors. Uh, Holbein does not do that as they very clearly state on the little description here. So this color is NG crimson. And so I should have maybe checked this before I did the unboxing, but these are gouache that are traditional colors used in Japanese paintings. So I think they might be slightly different from their regular uh, gouache selection. I'm not exactly sure in what respect, if anyone knows then yeah, please, please share in the comments. One thing I'm noticing, for example, with this one is it seems like this red is slightly glossy. Um, I could be wrong about that, but it has a little bit more of a gloss than I would be used to with a regular gouache. So this is iron oxide red or Bengara. I don't know if I'm saying that right. That first one looks a little bit more transparent. This one we'll see. It doesn't have, ah yes, it does say these are single pigments. Um, this one's opaque. And yeah, so you can see here, oh, maybe I'll show you here. Uh, if you look at these, there's that white circle, which um, shows that it's opaque. And then here it's a black circle, and that means it's transparent. So. I was definitely seeing and feeling that correctly. Iron red oxide. Uh, I'm pretty familiar with this in terms of watercolor. I've never used it as a gouache, but it's a very beautiful color. Earthy, obviously. Um, quite permanent, if I'm not mistaken. Beautiful color. Very, like, rust. And actually that would work really well with the purple and the blue here. The next one is Russet Brown, or Azuki. Oh yeah, and of course I didn't mention it, but did I mention it? This is the winter set, traditional colors of Japan winter. And actually they have four sets that are, you know, spring, winter, summer, autumn. 
I didn't say that in the right order, but <laughs> you know what I mean. So seasonal palettes, and that's the idea that I thought was really fun and interesting. Um, I find that personally very inspiring to kind of follow the seasons in terms of colors. So that's the thing that really attracted me to these, um, this specific gouache set. Whereas this one was more of a rusty brown, this is kind of like a dark maroon reddish brown. You put a bit too much water. But that's the nice thing also with gouache is that you can play around with textures that are more akin to watercolor. Um, they're very versatile in that way that you can use them opaque and you can use them, uh, yeah, more, more like watercolor. They are not going to move the same way as watercolor does. I find that watercolor pigments flow more easily in water than, uh, than do gouache pigments. Our next one is Kogesha Dark Brown. So we have a nice array of many browns here. And I am not managing my space very well, as usual. <laughs> Story of my life. But I actually like that there are these multiple browns in this set, so you can really get a sense of the different flavors and moods of the very subtle hue shifts. And it's also cool to see it next to my raw umber, which in comparison has a slightly grayer quality, slightly more yellow and slightly more muted. I'm struggling with this. Since I'm like doing it in this way where I'm only using the paint that I squeezed out of the tube and I'm trying to go with a smaller shape but with my massive brush, I really haven't facilitated my life here. <laughs> it's uh... There we go. I mean, it is what it is. This is really more about showing you the colors and rather than me being perfectionist about how I'm doing these, but that's the way it goes. All right, let's check the next one. Patina. Interesting. It looks kind of like a blue. If I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Oh, it's getting a bit dark. Going to. Oh, that surprised me. I thought it was blue, but the light is kind of dying here, so it doesn't surprise me that I didn't see it well. So this is actually a sort of dark green. Well, maybe it's more of like a viridian, very bright green, actually. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if that was a viridian green. Quite transparent as well. Come on. And confirmed by the little black shape, black circle on the tube. And this is one that I tried with Stephanie um, and that I thought was really beautiful, russet green or mirucha. And this is a very muted uh, dark green. I think this would be perfect for like a forest 
which I think this whole set kind of has that feel of a foresty, um, foresty scape. And of course I still have some paint from the other one on my brush, which is a little bit bothersome, but look at that beautiful yellow muted green color. And I used it, oh, there we go. I should just use a smaller brush. It would make it easier to show you. But you can get a sense of how it would look slightly more diluted. Really beautiful color. And then this one... Oh, I should probably... I'm going to change my water and <laughs> clean my brush because the next one is this blue and I'm really going to contaminate it if I don't, if I don't clear that up. So let's move on with this beautiful blue, which was honestly the main reason that I wanted to get this palette. I mean, look at that. That is so stunning. It's called Geisha Blue, did I say that? Or Shinbashi. And I think it actually pairs very beautifully with that green, the russet green right next to it. This is also a color that I used to hate and that I now love. Next we have um, this darker blue. I don't know, I haven't tried this one. Hummingbird blue. Having a nice set of blues is always wonderful because I don't know, blue is one of those very soothing colors. Uh, when I really want to feel peaceful, I'll often grab a blue. Oh, this reminds me of my peacock blue, uh, which, which was one of my first ever Holbein watercolor tubes, which I actually got at a fair that I was participating at. And there was a whole bunch had a stand there. And at the end of the weekend, the the guy who was taking care of the stand came by all the other artists' stands and said, Hey, if you guys want to try some whole bind out, come over and take your pick, which was mind blowing. And so I picked out a blue that is literally it really reminds me of that one. I'd have to test them side by side and was one of my favorite colors for many, many years. And that's actually how I discovered Holbein. And I think that if I ha that hadn't happened, I never would have known because I find it very difficult to find um, these colors in physical stores, at least where I live. So I often have to end up buying them online, like in this case with Jackson's. Um, or once, once I used this, uh, website called Splendith, which is based in the Netherlands, um, German websites, I don't know, in France I've struggled to find them in stores. So, I again have too much water on my brush. There's a pattern here, have you noticed? Very beautiful, bright, kind of magenta purple. Did I say what this one was called? This one is called Peony. Peony. Not sure how you say that. And so it's looking like a lot of these are actually quite transparent, which is interesting. Yep. This one I think is probably semi-transparent. Can you see that? Because there's a 
black circle, but it has a line through it. This was another one that I tried that Stephanie um, allowed me to try and that I also fell in love with. Absolutely, the two or three colors that really made me want to get this palette were this one, that blue, and that green. So, I will show you what I mean. Um, because it's not just a regular gray in my books. It has a slight hue to it. Like a, oh god, I have so much color in my brush. Don't do this at home. <laughs> the way that I'm doing it at the moment. Um, yeah, okay. It just has a really beautiful undertone Kind of like a, I would say like a slight greenish undertone to it. Tell me if you agree or disagree. But yeah, to me it has a slight, a slightly greenish, yellowish undertone, which I find very, very lovely. And then, ooh, blue black. That sounds fun. Say beaucoup. Ooh, I think I'm gonna love that one, and I think I also put too much paint down on that one. Both too much paint and too much water. Yes, it's possible to do both of those things simultaneously. I really should have just used a palette. I would have it would have made this way easier. Very nice color. And finally, one very special color which I'm always hesitant with shimmers, but this is an antique gold. So we'll see if I like this one or not. It's really, uh, it really depends. Uh, sometimes I really don't like how shimmers look and sometimes I do. This one definitely is a very kind of yellowy gold. I have a tendency to prefer kind of like bronzy golds. But I have to say, it is quite nice. I think, I think I would like to offset it with something more muted and darker. It's definitely not my favorite, but... It still has a beautiful quality to it. And I could envision it like if you just use it in very, very sparse places in your painting that I could give it a bit of that little magical feel. And there is one thing is that even if I don't like the final result of a shimmer, I love painting with shimmers. Because it's just so nice to see all those little shimmery bits capturing the light and uh, as they move. So there we go. These are so fun. Um, definitely a wintry palette with a sort of magical touch to it, which is not surprising for, you know, a Japanese traditional color set. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I think that's the first time I use those words. I think that's funny. Um, like and subscribe <laughs> if you haven't already. I still can't get over how weird that is to say. Um, I'll get used to it, I guess. And yeah, let me know if you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to have more of these, I will see you very, very soon.